What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel and welcome back to another video for you guys today. This video is going to be 5 things we learned from Liverpool 5, Chelsea 3. And before I start this video I want to say if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to Carefree Lewis G as well. And also press the bell notification button too to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. Now, Liverpool 5, Chelsea 3. A game where we could have guaranteed ourselves top four stars, but we're pushing it to the last day. Three goals scored in yet another Chelsea game since we got our new shirt sponsor, so those memes are flying around everywhere. And it was a disaster class in some areas, but only in some areas. And I feel like for a lot, of, for some players, they're going to be coming out of the game feeling like they were let down by other players. And they're going to feel like we were very close to a brilliant comeback from 4 1 down, but individual mistakes and errors let us down today and the first point i'm gonna make is one you have to start with this one it's kepper and the kepper agenda is just well and truly in the mud first thing i want to say any one of those chelsea fans that were sending kepper death threats are an embarrassment to this club because regardless of that and this is coming from someone who's defended kepper of all season how the hell are you sending death threats to one of our own uh, that don't make sense to me. It just sounds bare, insecure and shit. But we'll talk about Kepper anyway because regardless of what he shouldn't be what he shouldn't be receiving off the backlash of this game, he was poor again. And I think from Kepper, ah, oh, it's hard defending this guy, but he has no confidence in himself. You can see it from the way he set up for the Trent's free kick, the guy didn't even dive for it. Fact is, that shouldn't have been a free kick in my opinion. I think Kovacic got the ball and I think the ref was even saying it to Kovacic after he called the foul. But Kepa still didn't even make an attempt to dive for it. What other goal? The fifth goal as well. Marcus Alonso had a lot to blame for that goal. And I'm going to go on to Marcus Alonso later on in this video. But Kepa with his jelly wrists just couldn't get a hand to it yet again. And I think the game was... I think Kepa's season has been perfectly signified by a set piece. Which is another point that I'm going to come on to later on in this video. Um, it was a set piece in the 91st minute which came across the face of goal that he didn't bother to try and punch out for and Van Dijk nearly got the sick foul of it and about five or six of the Chelsea players were shouting Kepa's name in frustration because they thought he should have gone to it. This is a guy with bottom barrel confidence right now and as a keeper I did believe in him in the first season. The guy got, free clean, the, guy got the third highest clean sheets in the Premier League and he didn't have a great defence in front of him then either but the defence has declined this season and Kepper has just heavily, heavily regressed this season. And it feels like it's another one of those players that we've overspent for. And I'm thinking we're now at the point where we have to try and see if we can sell Kepper because I don't think that he has his mindset here anymore. I think the writing's been on the wall for a little while now. And we tried to we've tried to have hope for him because he has shown potential in so many games for us in the last I want to say two seasons, but this season has been, hasn't been good. But last season, he was good as well. And that gave you something to believe in. But if he hasn't got the confidence and the belief in himself, you cannot expect anyone else to have the same confidence and belief in that player. I feel like Lampard's kind of had enough because he's never... Re I, don't re I haven't really heard Lampard come out in full support of Kepa. If anything, he got benched in February as well. And all the rumours are saying that Chelsea are on the lookout for another goalkeeper. So I think the writing's on the wall for Kepa. And I think the agenda is just well and truly in the mud. Second point. One of Pulisic or Hudson-Odoi should have started. I'm not going to say both. Because if I'm playing devil's advocate. Those three substitutes from Frank Lampard was a tactical masterclass. It changed the aspect of the game. And if it wasn't for Kepa and Alonso. We would have, I think we would have come back. One of Pulisic or Hudson Doy should have started. I get keeping more or less the same lineup because of the way that we played against Manchester United. But one of the another one of the issues with this game was that Liverpool had an entire week to prepare for this match because they played Arsenal on the Wednesday and we had the semi-final on Sunday and we had a two-day break before that. That is not an excuse. Before any of you men in the comments section say I'm salty or anything, that's not an excuse, but it is just a fact. Liverpool had more time to rest for that and that's probably why they overran us in certain areas of the game they were able to outlast us for longer, other than our own individual mistakes as well. But one of Pulisic or Hudson Doy should have started just so we had a bit more freshness in the attack. Willian, I thought, was good tracking back, but going forward didn't offer much. And to be honest, he's played the most out of any player since lockdown, so you had to expect he wasn't going to be that good today. 
Um, Mason Mount as well, I didn't think he had a good performance either. I thought he was gassed as well. And preferably, if I could have taken one player out at the starting lineup, at the starting lineup in hindsight, it would have been Mason Mount because I don't think he was fresh going into this game and I would have rested him for the Wolves match. Hudson-Odoi and Pulisic were both fr fresh, uh, fresh breaths of air when they came onto the field. Pulisic's stats in speak for himself. 31 minutes played, one goal, one assist, 22 touches, three out of four successful dribbles, 100% pass accuracy, and four to eight duels won. The guy's strength has improved, his aggression's improved as well. The guy was so composed in front of goal as well for the second goal. And the first goal, when he just came onto the pitch and decided, cool, I'm going to end three Liverpool players' careers straight up just for the disrespect of benching me for this match. Pulisic needs to start against Wolves. I'd say maybe Hudson Doy as well, but I think Willian's gonna start regardless. And to be fair, Willian came off early, I think. Yeah, Willian did come off early, so he might be a bit more fresh for this match. But one of Pulisic or Hudson Doy should have started this game. That's my second point. Third point, set pieces. Again. Yet again, we conceded another goal from a set piece. That is our 16th goal from a set piece th this season that we've conceded. Uh, 10 of those have come from corners, 6 being free kicks. And only Norwich have conceded more from us this season in the Premier League. And I think we're the second worst team in Europe when it comes to defending corners. That third goal... I'd say it's a bit of bad luck, but uh, lack of anticipation from a lot of players. Jorginho, it comes off his hand. The second, the split second reaction takes Rhys James out of the game and Genie Wijnaldum's the first one to react to it and smashes it past Kepa. But defensive organisation is so poor and Liverpool could have got a couple more goals from corners as well. There was one where they played the ball straight down to Salah. It was a ground pass as well and no one came to anticipate it and Salah could have just smashed that in. Even the free kick that I was talking about with Kepa, where everyone was shouting at him. Rudiger left Van Dijk doing nothing. The guy was just ball watching and didn't clock Van Dijk until it was too late. He would have had to take some responsibility for that goal as well if that one went in. And defensive organisation has been such a huge problem from us. And I really feel like we're our own worst enemy at times. Sometimes we'll have such breathtaking performances and then we'll just slap ourselves back in the face and just lose confidence out of nothing. Set pieces, poor. And I would, I also want to throw screamers in as well. We can see so many screamers and Kepa's jumping really needs to improve. Keita, it's a great finish. And it's the same thing with Zaha and the same thing with a lot of players who have scored screamers against us this season. But we don't prepare for them. We leave too much space in the midfield for them. People are going to blame William for losing the ball in that game. I think it was a good press for Liverpool for the first goal. I don't even want to blame Liv William too much from that. And this is coming from someone who doesn't really rate William that much. I don't even blame him for that. It weren't his fault. But set pieces has been a huge, huge issue for us. Our Achilles heel and it's the thing that's hurt us so many times. Not even this season, last season as well. Don't forget how poor we used to be on the set pieces under Sari. And everyone used to blame him for it. Nope, it is a defensive problem. It is a team issue and we need to work on it. Point number four, defensive reinforcements are needed in the summer. Rudiger and Alonso look disappointing yet again today. And... This is the issue, it's consistency. And we need more consistent defenders if we want to have a more solid defence. I like all the attacking signings that we're doing and I'm not, I'm not saying anything about not signing any of them. But a defence wins you titles. The attack will only take you so far. If the defence is poor, you're going to have games like the game we had yesterday where we lost 5-3. And that just, looks like, that just looks like a glimpse into the future if we don't get any defensive reinforcements. Rudiger looked rash as hell to yesterday. Couldn't clear a ball to save his life and he lost concentration on so many occasions. I already spoke about the Van Dyke one for one. Clearances as well. Possession on the ball. He couldn't handle himself against the press. Alonso looked just as disappointing to be honest. Going forward he was alright and he looked a bit promising in the first half. But in the second half he just completely petered out the game and he was just doing sideways passes. Couldn't really defend. He had a huge part to play in Liverpool's fourth and fifth goals. The fourth goal he didn't close down Trent quickly enough. The fifth goal, the ball comes down across the entire face of goal and Alonso slows down. Like seriously, after the West Ham game as well where you'd leave your entire left hand side exposed and you're jogging back, you're going to do this again. Like you could say maybe, oh he shouldn't have been on the pitch because he's played too many games. I don't care, bruv. Be fast, it's about effort. If we see you trying and you just can't get there in time, it ain't really your fault. A guy was slowing down yet again. And if you just put a leg out onto it, if you tried to slide and block it, 
then it would have looked a lot better on him. But it doesn't look better on him because the guy slowed down. We need more reinforcements. The only reason why I say keep Alonso is because he's a better left wing back than Emerson is. But we need a solid left back. We need a centre back with experience if we want to be serious about a title challenge next season. Final point. Top four. Somehow top four is still in our hands. If we win, we've got top four next season. If we draw, we've got top four next season. If we lose and Manchester United win, we still have top four this season. So top four is still in our hands. We just cannot bottle it to lose I, to Wolves. I promise you, if we drop out a top four in the final match day after being fourth since like October or something, it's going to be a huge bottle job. Regardless of the situation that it looked like at the start of the season and the great job that Frank Lampard has done, it is a bottle job for the club if we don't make top four from the position that we've been in throughout this entire season. And also looking at the projection for the final games of the season, only two scenarios out of nine where Chelsea can drop out the top four. That's if Chelsea lose and Leicester draw or win. The ball is in our court. Let's just not mess it up from here. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the points I've made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and peace.